Hello and welcome to this video. Today it's the second test for the Zen Puma and I'm just gonna let the car drive in the background while I'm talking a bit. In the last video I was testing the WR8 and the Zen Puma side by side. If you didn't watch that video yet I'm putting a link in the description and maybe a card on screen somewhere so you can check that out. The main takeaway from that video was that the WR8, I've made it quite a lot understeer in the setup and the Sen, which is all brand new, uh, it's, um, it's much more neutral in the steering, it, it, um, it moves a lot with the chassis, you have a lot of roll and a lot of pitch and you can play with that and get it to turn quite uh, much actually, even though it has less steering angle than the WR8. So it's um, yeah, it moves more. It's it's a bit more fun, I think, actually. But uh, also due to all the motion, it was a little bit slower because I couldn't really like understand what it was going to do next. When I had to drive it quite smoothly to to balance all of that motion, let's say. But it's fun, and uh, of course the WR8 is also fun. But this time I thought it was a little bit like I couldn't do as much. I could do the the laps. I could do the consistent times and everything, but yeah, and it was faster. And but um, mm, yeah, like driving-wise, it was um, less interesting, let's say. And then on to today's test. What are we looking at? I put the faster servo in. I don't know if you can see the effect, but uh, the idea is that as long as everything is fine, you're driving smoothly and no worries, then it can be quite all right with a slow servo however a faster servo will help you when you have to respond to different things such as unexpected oversteer if you hit a patch of slippery surface or something like that if you look at the car and you see that you need to do something and then it takes a while for your signal to actually reach the car and take effect then the situation has changed so you're doing maybe too little too late or also when you have solved the problem you see that ah now the car is going to be be fine we're back on track we're heading in the right direction so you go to neutral on the steering but then it takes the time for that to take effect so meanwhile the car will still be steering so then you're not following the road anymore you were at one time but when the signal arrives in the car to neutralize the steering then you're already starting to go onto the other side of the track so yeah and while i was inside the receiver box i decided to also change the receiver and transmitter to a standard setup that i have uh, i was always wanting to do that but I thought I'd do the first test with the stock radio. Uh, but I really think it's nice to have the display to be able to see the values and change the curves for for Expo and stuff like that. And yeah, you can have the different model memories. You can make different profiles for different uh, track conditions, for instance, or different locations. So yeah, a, a lot more convenient to have if you feel like it. I think it's a nice thing. So a quick summary of the changes that I made. I put the Sanda system in and I put the Savox 1258TG which does 0 to 60 degrees in 0 0.08 seconds. So it should be quite fast. It's still 12 kilos which I think the original one was, uh, was also the same, 12 kilos. Uh, but th the main thing is making the system faster. I think I've achieved that. And I don't know if that is the sole thing that reflects in the video or in the lap time. But I think that uh, I had a little bit more consistency in this run. And you will see it later as well in the lap times. But yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look. There's a few really nice laps in the end here. so. I'm just gonna be quiet for a while, I think, and yeah, enjoy! <laughs> 